Remember, there are three main ways to get rich despite what the world will tell you. Intelligent effort, leverage, and network. Know that others before you have achieved what you want. Remove your ego and go hunt them out and learn from them. You don't need to watch any other videos on the internet ever. Rob, for those who don't know who you are, who are you and how do you get rich? So, I'm Rob Moore, the disruptive entrepreneur, I've been called. Um, I started my first business 17 years ago, £50,000 in debt. Fast forward to now, I have, I spoke to Mark about this yesterday, it's over 360 properties stroke rental units in the portfolio that we own. We have 1,300 plus tenants in our entire management company. Have the UK's largest property training company, Progressive Property. I've written 18 books. Many of those are bestsellers in all book categories. I have the Disruptors podcast, what, we're in our eighth year. Um, one of the biggest podcasts in the world, I believe, and it's hundreds of millions of downloads and views. I like investing in anything that pays a return. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people it is now, but I've definitely mentored hundreds of thousands of people in starting their business. And I have um, one of the biggest um, membership site platforms for entrepreneurs, which has nearly 10,000 members. It's called Rob.team. Rob, so as a multimillionaire, someone who's been in business for almost 20 years, what are the secrets to getting rich? Well, first off, I can tell you, it's not what most people think and not what most people say. Most people aren't rich, so you have to discount what most people say. And even a lot of people I know that are rich, they don't know how to take out what they learn becoming rich and teach it to someone else. So I'm gonna give you an, an example of one of the biggest fallacies out there about being rich and successful is hard work. It's absolutely wrong. Some of the richest people I know work the least, I'm working maximum an hour a day at the moment, as you know, because we're training for a fight and that's what I'm mostly doing. And if hard work equaled wealth, riches and success, every janitor, every cleaner, every miner, builder, every labourer, they would be rich, wouldn't they? Because isn't it true that there are so many hard-working people around the world? I mean, I mean, slaves probably work the hardest. And slaves earn the least. But they work the hardest. But it doesn't hard work equal riches. No, it does not. So I think that there are three elements to becoming rich. And I've made hundreds of millions of pounds. So I know this to be true. Number one is intelligent effort. Not hard work, intelligent effort. Number two is leverage. And number three is network. So which one do you want me to start with? Let's start with network. Okay. So probably the best hack and secret, the secret that isn't a secret because people know it, but those that know it won't tell you it. So it's a secret to you. And it's only not a secret once you learn the secret. And that is, the quickest way to get rich is to build a network of people who are rich and do what they've done and learn what they've learned and own the traits of the greats. Stand on the shoulders of giants, the titans of wealth. So I've had many billionaire mentors. When I first started in real estate, I got an audience on more than one occasion with a, a property billionaire. It was the only property billionaire I knew at the time, Andreas Paniotta. He was very kind in um, letting us come to his offices and um, giving us time. And I was mentored right at the start of my business career by James Kahn, who back then was probably one of, if not the biggest dragon on Dragon's Den, way back in what, 2009 and 10. And I learned more in an hour with a billionaire or a 200 millionaire than you could three years at university learning a degree in business and finance from someone who's broke. Because the tutors who teach business and finance, what does a tutor get paid at the average college? <laughs> They're broke. And this is the paradox, the irony of the system, is that broke people are teaching the masses business and finance um, 
And then the people with the real knowledge, the system likes to silence us. So there is someone in your town or city or someone online or in a DM that's already where you want to be. And your job is to get a lunch with them, get a response to a DM or a VM or even um, offer to buy lunch or donate to their charity to get an hour of their time. It's, it's much easier than you think. Here's why. People who are rich and successful want to help other people become rich and successful. There are a few that are like, I'm rich and successful and I don't want anyone else to know what I know and I'm going to be secretive. There are a few like that, especially in certain niches or industries which are highly competitive. But it bothers me not how many people launch a podcast or launch a YouTube channel or write a book or get into property or business training or education or get into real estate. It bothers me not. I'll teach the whole fucking world. They won't become my competition and all that will happen is I'll end up making more money out of it. So most people are like me, whereby we learned a lot and we want to give back and we want to help. Now, sometimes the difficulty for that is time because I get hundreds of DMs and VMs, you know, sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes on a weekly basis, depends on, you know, how um, well known I am at the time or if I'm on the front page of any papers or... Um, if I've gone viral on social media. So if you catch me at the wrong time and I'm a bit busy, it's going to be hard. But other than that, I try and respond to all my DMs and VMs and requests. I have a foundation that gives back to help young and underprivileged people start meaningful businesses. So um, in the world now where on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, virtually anyone who's been successful you can find content, you can find information that they're happy to give. If they're not so much the influencer type, they've probably been interviewed by a podcaster. Virtually every successful entrepreneur has been on all the big podcasts and shows. So it's actually not very difficult to consume information from people who've been there and done it. You know, if you wanted to gain muscle, you probably wouldn't do it from someone who was you know, a bag of hockey sticks of bones. And, you know, if you wanted to run a marathon, you wouldn't learn from someone who's just had a triple heart bypass. You'd learn from someone who's been there and done it. And that's probably the greatest secret that's not a secret. Why? Because it's so simple, yet people overcomplicate it so much. So they think that people wouldn't want to talk to them. They wouldn't want to interrupt their time. They might get rejected. A lot of people have a chip on their shoulder. Why would I learn from that twat? You know, quite a lot of people think they know better even though they don't. I remember when um, I got my first Ferrari and this was fift nearly 15 years ago. And I was so jealous of the only person um, in Peterborough that I knew that had a Ferrari. I was so jealous. I hated the guy. But do you know what jealousy is? What? It's desire. Like, you're probably not jealous of my Alexander McQueen hoodie, which was a thousand pounds, because you don't care for expensive clothes. So you're not gonna be jealous of me for that. But you might be jealous of my car collection as a person who loves cars. So you can only be jealous of something you desire. You can't be jealous of something you don't desire. So here's the paradox, and this is important. You look at all those people who are successful, you actually want what they've got, but you're jealous of them. And the jealousy stops you, but jealousy is desire. And I learned this when I got my first Ferrari. Here's how I learned this. Because I hated the guy who had a Ferrari because I secretly wanted one. And then when I got a Ferrari, people started to hate me. And so I'd gone full circle and I read, well, why are you hating me? I've just worked really hard for four years and I just bought my dream car. Why do you hate me for that? They don't hate me. They're jealous of me and jealousy is desire. So what a lot of people have to do is put their ego away and their jealousy away and they have to look at their goals and outcomes. And if their goals and outcomes are to be a millionaire, to build a really successful business, which is, you know, this is what we talk about mostly, then remove all of those egos and blockages and just go and hunt them out. Go and pay and join networks. You know, there are, my business partner's just been accepted into the YPO. It's a very exclusive 
high net worth club. I'm in seven figure, eight figure masterminds, i.e. the eight figure mastermind I'm in, you have to make more than 10 million to pound. The eight figure mastermind I'm in, you have to make more than 10 million pounds a year to get in that mastermind. Podcasts, let's talk about podcasts. People do not get the best reason to have a podcast. They think it's to go viral. They think it's to make money. They think it's to be a creator or an influencer. It is not, not by a long shot. The single best reason to have a podcast is the people you meet. And you know I'm very protective of those people. In fact, we're going to meet one tonight. We are indeed, yeah. We are going to meet my rock god idol and listen to the first public playing of his new album, who I never would have connected with in a million years if it weren't for him coming on my podcast. So start a podcast. Here's an idea. Like, this is a test for how um, rich people really want to get and what they're prepared to do. So I'm going to give this information for free and I'm not going to ask for any commission. And I want someone to go do it and then message me and tell me they've done it. Launch a podcast on how to be a millionaire and then reach out to every single millionaire and interview them on how they became a millionaire. And all of a sudden, in 100 episodes, which will take you 100 weeks, not even two years, you'll have 100 millionaires in your network. It's hard to get rich. But the thing is, people don't do it. Why? I'm not good enough. Why would anyone listen to me? Or the jealousy ego thing gets in the way. Or I don't know where to start. Or I've got mortgages and car loans and family. And oh, if I get successful, will people criticise me and pull me down? Will I lose my friends? There's all these reasons. But your network is your net worth. And people are trying to build their net worth without building their network. We'll drive down to London today and you will quiz me for two hours on growing your business and offsetting some offsettables, should we call it that? And in working with me and managing my brand, you essentially get free mentoring from a multimillionaire. Now, like I said earlier, not every multimillionaire in the world wants to share their secrets, but it's obvious to find them. Because if you look at someone like me or Grant Cardone, we love to talk. Just find all the multimillionaires that love to talk. They're all on podcasts and YouTube videos. And it makes me feel really good to help people because 17 years ago I was 50 grand in debt and I was broke myself. So stand on the shoulders of giants, leverage the traits of the greats. Here's the thing, people are looking for the shortcut but they're looking in the wrong place. There is a shortcut to being rich. Because let's be honest, school, university, degree, diploma, masters, apprenticeship, 10 years, you've earned no money. You've got yourself 100 grand in debt. So that's the long cut to being broke. So there is a shortcut. It's just not one hour a day, automation, software, press a button, get passive income. That's bullshit. But there is a shortcut to success. And it is by knowing people who spent 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 years in business making millions and billions and asking them what worked best for you and doing it. What did you struggle with and mastering it? Where did you make mistakes and fail and avoiding it? And that can really reduce the time it takes to go from zero to millionaire. Okay, let's talk about some of the other points you mentioned as well. Okay, so what did I say? Intelligent effort Mm -hmm. and leverage. So intelligent effort is smart work, not hard work. And the rhetoric out there about hard work, what I like about it is, is trying to talk you out of being a lazy bastard. But sometimes there's a benefit of being a lazy bastard because you'll try and avoid all the things that take a load of time for no return, and you'll try and find the one force multiplier for most of the return. So, in business, 
there's a couple of sayings which are similar. If you want something done, give it to a busy person. If you want something done, give it to a lazy person. Bill Gates used to like to hire lazy people. And what he meant by that is selective about where they work. So intelligent effort is working on the right thing. Because working hard on the wrong thing, well, everyone says you've got to work hard. So I'm working hard, why aren't I getting any results? Because you're working hard on the wrong thing. You know those little dogs that like hump lampposts and trees? You know, you can hump all day a lamppost, but you ain't, that is not, that's hard work, humping a lamppost all day, but it's not smart work. And too many people in business are humping lampposts and they're humping them really hard and they're humping them 24-7, 365, and they're humping them harder than anyone else is humping the lamppost, but they're humping a lamppost. They're never going to get a result. Intelligent effort is, what three to five things could I do that would start and scale my business the quickest and best? What three to five things can I do that generate the highest revenue and the highest return on time invested? What one kind of ideal client can I target that's going to buy all of my products and services? What one asset class can I invest in that trumps all other asset classes? What one thing can I get known for that can leverage multiple brands? So these kind of questions are intelligent effort. You and I are training for a, our first fight in a boxing match. Could be up to a quarter of a million pound raise for charity and we're taking it very seriously. And we've both hit the wall of overtraining. And overtraining is hard work, but it's not intelligent effort. No. Intelligent effort is, what two or three basic things can I do to give me the best chance of winning the fight? Bearing in mind we're at the white co collar, or but we're, maybe we're between white collar and amateur. We're certainly not at the amateur level. And training or building a business or investing with intelligent effort will get you more rich and more successful much more quickly than hard work. Hard work only applies to people who have shown to do absolutely no work. And that's maybe just step one. But like I said before, I'm doing no more than an hour a day work at the moment. I told you, didn't I? I just got paid £100,000 today in one day. Didn't do no work today for that. Now, have I worked hard in the past? Yes. Have I at times worked too hard and burned myself out and could I have worked smarter? Yes. So that's intelligent effort, figuring out the force multiplier tasks, the key result areas, the income generating tasks. And then the third one is leverage. So I was thinking about this on the drive-in and um, I can only realistically work maybe 14 good hours a day and I could probably only keep that up for two to three days and then I'd start to get distracted or fatigued. Um, in terms of quality, because to actually do even just eight hours of quality work a day, no distractions, no interruptions, no avoidances, not admin and minutiae, actual high quality intelligent effort, even to do eight hours a day is really hard. Because everyone's distracting you and you check your emails and you check your voice memos and someone wants you to um, solve and fix their problem and their emergency, which is theirs and not yours. And you can get dragged all over the fucking place, as you know. So... I'm actually going to reduce that and say, realistically, you can get six to eight good hours work done a day. But if I have 150 staff, even if they can only do four hours good work a day because they're half as motivated as me, 150 times four is 600 hours a day. And my best output might be 14 hours a day for 
two or three days before I need a fucking day of sleep. So again, we're taught to work hard, work hard, work hard. No, outsource, get staff, automation, processes, systems. I mean, even intelligent effort, you could argue, is leverage. And your network is leverage. So if I was doing a visual on a screen, I'd probably have like a triangle whereby leverage would be the top. And then underneath leverage would be intelligent effort and network. And sometimes entrepreneurs, they wear hard work like a badge of honour. You know, they brag about it. They're proud of it. But humping a lamppost is nothing you should be proud of, no matter how many humps you can do per minute. But that's what people seem to, to brag about. So other things you can leverage. You can leverage other people's time, which is staff, outsourcers, researchers. You can leverage other people's money by going to banks or private lenders. So, for example, invest in real estate. You can in leverage other people's knowledge by getting them as a mentor. If you want to write a book, maybe go and interview experts in that field who've been doing it decades and leverage their knowledge of, to research into a book. Leverage YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok for all the people that you can reach without having to pay ads to reach them all. So that's the leverage part. But leverage takes a switch of your mindset. A lazy person naturally, here's the thing to all you lazy people out there who've been shamed by everyone for being lazy, you actually have an advantage. Because if you can start thinking in terms of leverage and not hard work, you'll end up reducing all the wastage and the humping of the lampposts uh, and you'll end up quickly getting to force multiplier tasks. There you go. So what do you think of hustle culture which says you've got to work 18 hours a day then? To think be successful? it's absolute bollocks. But they say that's what Bezos does, that's what Elon Musk does. Well, they probably don't know Bezos or Elon Musk. Um, and Bezos and Elon Musk are already successful and they have multiple ventures. So do I believe that Elon Musk works really hard? I actually do. But he's, what, got four fairly big companies? And by fairly, I mean massive companies. If he was only running one of those, he could be a chairman and be required one to two hours a day. The thing with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and, you know, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.001% of the population of the world, they're obsessive entrepreneurs who want to change the world and who will never stop growing. So I actually decided in the 24 weeks that we're training for this fight to say no to all opportunities so I could just solely focus on winning this fight. After winning this fight, I'll start rewriting my book again that I've started called Money Matrix. I'm also um, updating another book. I'm going to be um, investing well that maybe nearly a quarter of a million pounds will raise into the foundation. It's a couple of other business models I've been just holding off so I can soon make myself busy. But I'll make myself busy in multiple ventures. So the reason that Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos work like you think they do. You don't know that they do, by the way. You just think that they do. It's just popular rhetoric, isn't it? But they're running multiple enterprises where most people haven't even started one. Now, I would also suggest that Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos would have massive leverage. Like working hard to them would probably mean having lots of meetings in where people are pitching them or they've done all the work and they're reporting back and then what Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are doing is spending most of their working day making important decisions, which isn't hard work. Making important decisions is intelligent effort. I mean, Steve Jobs, he was famous for going on really long walks if he wanted to thrash out an idea or solve a problem. I mean, a long walk with an individual is not hard work, it's intelligent effort. So going back to value, if an employee came to you and said, I work really hard, I'm working 18 hours a day, give me a pay rise. 
I'm sure you're going to say no to that. But if they come to you and say, I have now created some system which adds value, that which brings in clients, whatever that is, they're going to get a pay rise. So again, it's understanding value. If you can fix value, if you can create value, that's what's going to create riches. It's not hard work and putting in more effort and time. It all comes down to value. Yeah, you have to increase the value that you offer. To increase the value that you offer, you have to check that what you're doing is valuable to people. So I created the formula for wealth and I'm actually updating it for my new book, Money Matrix. So my original formula for wealth is wealth equals value plus fair exchange times leverage. Value is the value you offer. Fair exchange is how much do I get paid and am I grateful for the profits and is it fair? And how much do you pay and are you grateful for the service and is it useful? And then leverage is how many can I sell? The iPhone might be great, but if I can only sell five iPhones as opposed to five million, there's no leverage. So that was my original formula for wealth, but I've updated it. And the new formula, breaking news, because this might be the first time I've shared it, is wealth equals perceived value plus fair exchange times leverage. And what that means is, it's not what you think is valuable, it's what the world thinks is valuable at the moment. The world thinks AI is valuable. The world thinks social media agencies are valuable. So you want to make sure that you're removing the friction of doing something that isn't valuable anymore. Is the purpose of a career money, happiness or something else? The purpose of a career at a humanity level is to do something that's useful for humanity. And this is where people could really change how much money they make. Because you know whenever you hear people talking about my career, my CV, it's not your fucking career and it's not your CV. If you changed it to how many people can I impact with my career? How many people can I serve, reach, touch, inspire? So actually the humanity's purpose of your career is to be as useful and as valuable as possible to humanity. And the more useful and valuable as possible to humanity you are, as long as you follow my formula for wealth, you will get rewarded with riches. And here's an example of how that works. If you are selfish in your career and you do what you want, not what your boss wants, you'll never go very high up in the company and you'll never earn very much money. If you job hop all the time because you just want a higher basic salary and a bit of commission, in the end, the employers will go, well, this person jumps every two years, I'm never hiring them. Whereas, if you want a pay rise, you mentioned this earlier, if you want a pay rise, here's how to do it. Find out what is most valuable to your company, your manager, or the business owner. Find out what could make them the most amount of money and figure out how to do it, and then pitch it to them. And then put a little request in for your cut. Because people come to me all the time. Oh, Rob, my mortgage payments have gone up. Oh, Rob, I'm having a kid. Oh, Rob, inflation. And they want a pay rise for that. Said, so with all due respect to everyone who says that to me, fuck you all. Why? Because do I want to pay you more money so you can afford your loans that you took out and your debt that you got into? No. And I'm a nice guy. I want to give my team and my staff a good job. But I'm not paying you so you can afford more shit that you want. I'm paying you to be useful to me. So if you figure out, what does Rob need? Maybe he wants millions more viewers and listeners. Maybe he wants to buy more real estate. Maybe he needs more talented staff. And you figure out how you can help do that in your role with your skills. You pitch that to me and then you ask for your cut, which is either an increase in salary or or a comms. As long as I believe that that's possible, you're getting that. But if you come to me for your reasons for wanting a pay rise, I just have a rule. If someone comes to me for a pay rise and they're not prepared to add more value, it's always a no. Mm. And the world's the same. 
So that's how you get rich. You don't need to watch any other videos on the internet ever. Remember, there are three main ways to get rich despite what the world will tell you. Intelligent effort, leverage, and network. So know that others before you have achieved what you want. Remove your ego and go hunt them out and learn from them. I launched a platform a few years ago in lockdown called Rob.team to help people start and scale their business, get better financial education and knowledge, make, manage and multiply money. And there are hundreds of hours of courses, resources and masterclasses on wealth, success, investing, business and entrepreneurship. So if you'd like intelligent effort and leveraging me, you can join at rob.team. I guess there'll be a link or there in the, in the description. In the description somewhere. See you there. And remember this, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.